In the glow of luxurious chandeliers, the ballroom at the Imperial Hotel Seoul transforms into a meeting stage for the most feared Mafia family alliance. That evening, it was not just a business meeting but also a display of power and diplomacy among the strongest families in the region. Amid a crowd dressed in their finest gowns and suits, Jungkook and Yin, both inheriting the cold-bloodedness and assertiveness from their parents, stand as heirs to the dynasty. Jungkook, known for his upright posture and piercing gaze, appears a bit different this time. His sharp eyes occasionally steal glances at Yin, trying to read the expressions hidden behind her always controlled and perfect demeanor. Yin, standing gracefully beside her parents, feels his gaze. Every time Jungkook's eyes meet hers, a tiny thrill flows through her bones, making her nervous despite her efforts to not show it. Both families who have often met at similar formal events where Jungkook and Yin were always present but rarely interacted, are always busy accompanying their parents, following the unwritten protocol to not be too familiar in public. That morning, in the luxurious mansion of the Jian family, the morning sunlight breaks through large windows, illuminating the breakfast table filled with traditional Korean dishes. The atmosphere is calm, yet slightly tense. Jungkook's father, a man with natural authority and a commanding aura, begins the conversation calmly yet seriously. Jungkook, we have thought this through carefully and discussed it with the Park family. We plan to arrange your marriage with Yin, the daughter of our business associate, he reveals, looking directly into Jungkook's eyes seeking a reaction from his son. His mother always wisely supporting her husband's decisions, adds, this is a strategic move, Jungkook. This alliance will not only benefit the family business but also strengthen our position in our community. Jungkook, who had just sipped his green tea, gently placed his cup down. His facial expression remains calm, not surprised by the news, as if he had anticipated this conversation. I understand. I agree with the arrangement, he replies without hesitation, surprising his parents with his quick and unconditional acceptance. His father nods, clearly respecting Jungkook's decision. We are glad you see the wisdom in this. Yin is a smart woman and will be a good partner for you, both in business and in life. They continue breakfast while discussing more about the marriage details and future plans. Although Jungkook outwardly seems to accept the situation well, inwardly he starts to ponder what this means for his personal life and how he will interact with Yin, someone he still only knows from a distance. Plans for a more personal meeting with Yin are set, and Jungkook knows that the next step is to build a relationship that will be more than just a business alliance but also a partnership they can build together. In his mind he begins planning how he will get to know Yin more intimately. Finally, the day I get married has come. Various feelings are in Jungkook's heart, but one thing is certain, his life is about to change significantly. In the spacious living room with large windows open, letting the morning sunlight flood the room, the Park family sits relaxed. Yin, usually calm, now visibly appears surprised and uncomfortable with the sudden conversation about her arranged marriage to Jungkook, just disclosed by her father. Is there really no other option dad? Must it be Jungkook? I know he's competent, but he's too cold. I'm worried we won't be compatible, she expresses with a tone showing her anxiety. Her father, a man whose decisions never waver, looks at Yin with a stern gaze. Yin, I understand your concerns, but this is not just about personal compatibility. An alliance with the Jian family will strengthen our position. Jungkook is a highly respected man with a lot of influence. We need this relationship, her father replies, his voice indicating there is no room for further debate. Her mother, always trying to mediate in discussions, tries to ease the tension. Dear, maybe you can see this as an opportunity. Jungkook, though he is known for his cold demeanor, is a highly respected man. And you, with your gentleness, might be able to bring out another side of him. Yin sighs, her frustration and disappointment mixed within her. Yet, she knows arguing with her father's decision could worsen things. Okay, I will consider this further. But I hope, if it proves we are not compatible, you will consider my opinion, she says, trying to leave a little room for herself to breathe. Jungkook and Yin eventually agreed to get married after considering many factors. Their wedding ceremony is held luxuriously and on a grand scale. Their parents proudly showcase the marriage of their children. Jungkook and Yin look compatible, smiling at guests even though they are actually still strangers. After all, they married without dating, only having met briefly a few times, agreed, and then got married. Their parents believe that love can grow after marriage. Jungkook is not particularly concerned with love, hence he does not mind the arrangement, while Yin, having no power to oppose her parents, reluctantly goes with the flow. Nevertheless, she trusts her parents' choices, as they have always provided the best for her throughout her life, so she believes this time will be no different. 
As the event nearly concludes, after greeting the guests briefly as a formality, Jungkook decides to follow Yin up to their hotel room. Meanwhile, in the hotel room, Yin stands in front of a large mirror, already showered and changed from her magnificent wedding gown to a simpler yet elegant evening dress, featuring a low neckline and an open back. Now she is truly nervous yet filled with anticipation, she regulates her breath, trying to rid herself of the nerves that have persisted. Throughout the event, Jungkook spoke very little to her, her husband is indeed a man of few words. Even though Yin could feel a different kind of warmth from her husband's actions, as Jungkook almost held her hand throughout the day, he remained sparse in words. Honestly, she had always dreamt of a husband who was friendly and humorous. But it seems that dream is truly buried in Jungkook's cold persona, even for a chat, he seems uninterested. When Jungkook enters the room, he pauses for a moment, captivated by the beauty of Yin, looking very different from earlier in the day. The soft light from the room lamps highlights the contours of her stunning body. All efforts to maintain the control he had kept throughout the day begin to waver. Jungkook closes the door behind him and walks towards Yin with firm steps. He can see the tension in Yin and signs of nervousness in his wife. Without saying a word, he gently grabs her waist and pulls her closer. Yin looks into his eyes, not resisting at all. Carefully, Jungkook tilts his head and kisses her lips, softly at first, but soon deep and passionate as she responds with equal intensity. Jungkook lets his hands explore Yin's open back, his touch is igniting sensations that make her shiver. Yin, overcoming her nervousness, responds by wrapping her arms around his neck. And finally, that night becomes a long one for the two of them. The next morning, Jungkook is the first to wake up, sitting back against the bed headboard with disheveled sheets marking the night they had passed. His eyes softly sweep over Yin's face, still asleep next to him, admiring every detail of her beauty with awe. Yin, with her hair tousled, looks so peaceful and enchanting. Jungkook can't help but feel amazed at how beautiful his wife is, and he feels lucky to start the day with such a view. After a while, Yin begins to show signs of waking up. Her eyes blink open and realizing Jungkook is awake and staring at her, she quickly pulls the blanket to cover herself, her cheeks blushing with embarrassment. How long have you been awake? She asks with a raspy voice, still gathering her senses. Just a few minutes, Jungkook replies with a soothing smile. He reaches for Yin's hand, holding it gently. You look very beautiful when you sleep. Despite feeling embarrassed, Yin can't help but smile. I hope I didn't talk in my sleep or do something embarrassing, she says with a small laugh. Jungkook chuckles along with her, the atmosphere becoming more relaxed. Then, with a more serious yet gentle tone, he asks, Yin, do you regret what happened last night? I want to make sure you feel good about everything. Hearing his question, Yin looks at him with deep emotion. No, Jungkook, not at all. We are husband and wife, and last night was. It was special, I felt very close to you. Jungkook feels a deep relief hearing her words, and he tightens his grip on her hand. Yin's eyes then wander to Jungkook's broad chest, on his right side, her eyes catching several interesting tattoos, a majestic eagle image, and several other abstract designs, whose complexity makes Yin curious yet confused. Jungkook catches Yin's curious gaze. They symbolize freedom and strength, he says with a smile, pointing to the eagle tattoo on his chest. Before Yin can ask further, Jungkook changes the subject. We should start getting ready for our home, he says, his voice turning colder. I'll shower first. You can prepare what needs to be packed. With that, Jungkook gets up from the bed and walks towards the bathroom, while Yin begins to gather their belongings to prepare for their return to the home Jungkook had prepared for them both. As days pass unnoticeably, a month of marriage has gone by. Each day follows a similar rhythm, leaving Yin immersed in thoughts in the spacious but increasingly lonely bedroom. Jungkook, busy with his responsibilities, spends less and less time with his wife, widening the gap between them. That night, as the wall clock shows 11 o'clock, Jungkook's footsteps finally resonate, and the bedroom door opens to reveal his tired face. Yin rises from her seat by the window her heart swirling with a mix of relief and deep longing. It has been over a week since her husband returned home this late. You're home, Yin asks softly, helping him off with his leather jacket. Hum, why aren't you asleep? Jungkook looks at his wife's face. Um, I was actually waiting for you, Yin replies briefly, her voice soft, almost a whisper. Hearing Yin's response, Jungkook looks at her, now standing in front of him. His hands move to her neck and draw her close, and they share a passionate kiss for several minutes. Please prepare some warm water for me, he then requests. Oh, all right. Yin proceeds to prepare the bath water for her husband. A few minutes later, Jungkook finishes his bath and lies down on the bed. Like previous nights, they do nothing but sleep. Quietly, Yin gazes at the weary face of her husband, now asleep, 
Do you not miss me, Jungkook? Are you actually reluctant to accept me? Eventually, with a lonely heart, Yin falls asleep. That morning, the atmosphere at the breakfast table feels more silent than usual. Jungkook, typically quiet during breakfast, senses something unusual with Yin. Usually, even if they didn't talk much, there was a warm aura surrounding them. But today, everything feels different. Jungkook notices Yin's face looking pallor than usual, her eyes weak and her movements slow, as if every motion requires more effort. Yin, you don't look well. Are you feeling alright? Jungkook asks worriedly, stopping his activity of cutting bread. Yin tries to smile, though her eyes remain weary. I'm just a little tired, maybe worn out, she responds, her voice weak. But from the way she handles her spoon, Jungkook knows his wife is more than just tired. Without hesitation, Jungkook touches her forehead, which feels warm. He immediately stands up. You need to be checked, Yin. I'm taking you to the hospital. Yin, who dislikes hospital environments, quickly shakes her head. No, I don't want to go to the hospital. I just need rest. If you take me there, it might make me worse. I don't like the smell. Seeing Yin's reluctance to go to the hospital, Jungkook immediately picks up his phone and calls their family doctor. Dr. Han, could you please come to the house now? My wife isn't feeling well, he says urgently. After confirming the doctor's visit, Jungkook returns to look at Yin, who has finished her breakfast. He helps her stand up and escorts her back to their bedroom. Yin walks unsteadily, leaning on Jungkook, who carefully guides her. Once in the bedroom, Jungkook gently lays Yin down, covers her with a blanket, and sits by the bed, holding her hand. He watches her face with concern, wiping sweat from her forehead. I'll be here with you not going anywhere. Whatever you need, just tell me. For the first time, Yin, feeling touched and safe under his care, can only nod weakly, glad for his presence and support. A comfortable silence fills the bedroom, yet Jungkook remains mostly silent as they await the doctor's arrival. After a tense wait, Dr. Han's arrival brings relief to Jungkook. The doctor examines Yin thoroughly, checking her body temperature and listening to her heart. After a few minutes, Dr. Han gives his assessment. She's just exhausted. Maybe a bit stressed too. Nothing serious. But Yin needs plenty of rest, and I've prescribed some supplements to help her recover, Dr. Han says while writing down a prescription for additional vitamins. Jungkook sighs with relief, his worries easing. Thank you, doctor. I'll make sure she gets enough rest. Once Dr. Han leaves, Yin, still lying weakly, looks at Jungkook and says with a hoarse voice, I want to see my mom, Jungkook. I miss her so much. Hearing Yin's request, Jungkook doesn't hesitate. He immediately picks up his phone and calls his mother-in-law. Hello, mom, Yin isn't feeling well, and she wants to see you. Could you come to our house today? From the other end of the phone, the warm voice of Yin's mother sounds, Oh, my dear, of course. I'll be there soon. Thank you for calling me, Jungkook. We'll be waiting for your rival mom, Jungkook replies, before hanging up the phone. After ending the call, Jungkook sits back down by Yin's bed holding her hand. Your mom will be here soon. You can rest for now, he says gently. Yin nods, feeling a bit better, knowing that her mother will be coming, and reassured by Jungkook's presence. It only takes a few minutes for her to fall asleep again. Two hours later, Yin's mother finally arrives at Jungkook's house. The maids have prepared a glass of tea and some snacks for her. Unfortunately, Yin's father couldn't come as he had to work earlier. Yin, who had fallen asleep again after talking with Jungkook, is awakened by a gentle touch on her cheek. When her eyes open, she is greeted by the tender and caring face of her mother. Mom's here sweetheart, her mother says soothingly. I arrived about an hour ago, but you look so tired that I didn't want to wake you. Yin smiles weakly, feeling warmth and relief flow through her as she sees her mother. Mom, I'm so glad you're here she says, her voice trembling slightly. They embrace letting time pass as they hold each other tight. Yin's mother sits by the bed, stroking Yin's hair while continuing to talk, providing strength and comfort. You need to take care of yourself, Yin. Don't push yourself too hard. And Jungkook, her mother turns to Jungkook, who stands by the door watching them. Thank you for taking care of my daughter. Jungkook nods respectfully. I promise to always take care of her mom. After a while, Jungkook decides to give them some time together and leaves the bedroom, quietly closing the door behind him. The night has arrived. After Yin's mother has left, the bedroom is once again occupied only by Jungkook and Yin. Yin lies next to Jungkook, who is propped against the bed's headboard, an iPad in his hand, occasionally glancing at Yin. The attentive presence of Jungkook throughout the day brings Yin to a point of curiosity about her husband. With a mix of curiosity and slight apprehension, Yin asks, Jungkook, before we were married, did you ever fall in love with someone? The question catches Jungkook off guard, 
He shifts his gaze from the iPad screen to look at his wife, trying to read her expression before responding. Yes, there was someone I liked, he finally admits hesitantly, but at that time, I wasn't thinking about pursuing a relationship with anyone, including her. Hearing Jungkook's admission, something stings in Yin's heart. Although she knows it's part of Jungkook's past, she can't help feeling a twinge of sadness or perhaps jealousy. It's unclear, but Yin feels uncomfortable knowing this. Yin grows more anxious, wondering if Jungkook still has feelings for that girl. After all, their marriage was arranged, and Jungkook has never said that he loves her as his wife. Yin is also curious about who this girl is who managed to capture Jungkook's attention. A man as cold as the North Wind? Surely, she must be someone extraordinary for Jungkook to have had feelings for her. Yin wants to ask more, but her heart isn't yet ready to know more. It's getting late, let's go to sleep, Jungkook suddenly says, breaking Yin's train of thought. That night, Yin realizes, maybe he's been cold to me because he still loves that girl. She muses silently to herself. One morning, the atmosphere at the breakfast table feels slightly different. As Jungkook sips his coffee, he appears serious before finally revealing something he's been pondering. Yin, I need to travel to Japan next week for business. There are several important meetings I need to attend, he says, his eyes seeking a reaction from her. Yin feels a bit surprised and disappointed, wanting to join him, but noticing that Jungkook hasn't offered, she hesitates to ask. Trying to hide her true feelings, she responds, Oh, is that so? It must be very busy, right? Jungkook nods, Yes. It will be quite packed. I probably won't have much free time. How long will you be there? A week. Yin suddenly remembers something. Jungkook, you studied in Japan, right? I saw a photo of your graduation in your workspace. Yes. That's right. I spent several years there for my studies. That's why I have many acquaintances in Japan. They were my classmates, and some of them are now business associates. It must be nice to reconnect with old friends, she says, trying to sound positive. Jungkook catches the tone in Yin's voice trying to sound cheerful and feels guilty for not having offered to bring her along. Yin, if you want, maybe next time we can plan a trip together there for a vacation. But for this time, sorry, it's sudden and I will be very busy with meetings. Yin nods and smiles, trying to understand her husband's busy schedule. One week later, Jungkook is already in Japan, attending meetings with several business associates, some of whom are old friends. He looks pleased to reconnect with them after a long time. After leaving a meeting, he decides to take a leisurely walk, accompanied by a few of his guards. For some reason, he wants to enjoy the Japanese air, a place full of beautiful memories from his time living there. Suddenly, by the roadside, he sees an old tattoo artist smiling thinly at him. Something about the smile touches Jungkook's heart. Alright, getting a tattoo might help the old man. Eventually, Jungkook approaches and sits in the available chair. Make a tattoo for me, I will pay well for this, Jungkook says, smiling at the old man in fluent Japanese. Of course, the old man welcomes him enthusiastically. What would you like sir? I will create the best for you. Jungkook shakes his head while unbuttoning the top few buttons of his shirt, it's not a picture I want, make it someone's name on my chest, he says after three buttons are undone. The old man smiles knowingly, alright, I'll do my best, this person must be someone you love dearly, to have their name inked on your chest. Jungkook smiles faintly, without responding much to what the old man said. What's the name of the woman, the one you love? The old man asks, ready to start tattooing on Jungkook's broad chest. Jungkook smiles faintly again before finally mentioning a name, the woman's name is Hikari. One hour later, Jungkook smiles, satisfied with the new tattoo on his chest. The name Hikari is very beautiful, though it is a common name here in Japan, almost all Japanese women named Hikari are beautiful. I believe your Hikari must be very beautiful too, the old man comments sincerely as he smiles at Jungkook. Um, yes, she is indeed very beautiful, Jungkook replies briefly as he buttons up his shirt. He then takes out several bills and hands them to the old man. Please, keep the change, Jungkook says and leaves the place. The old man smiles warmly as he watches Jungkook leave with his guards, very pleased to have met Jungkook because he received a payment much higher than usual. Yin warmly welcomes her husband back from Japan. As soon as Jungkook enters, she immediately comes over and hugs him tightly. Missing him for a week seems to have kindled feelings of longing in her. Jungkook smiles faintly, returning Yin's hug while gently stroking her head. I'm home, he whispers in her ear. Yin tightens her embrace, truly glad her husband is back. It seems that seeds of love are beginning to sprout in her heart. After Yin released her embrace, she asked her husband, have you had lunch yet? She inquired gently with a sweet smile. Not yet. Have you eaten? Jungkook asked her in return. Yin shook her head slowly, 
I was waiting for you, she said softly, her cheeks blushing. Jungkook smiled and immediately took her hand, leading her to the dining room. Then let's eat, he said. They then had lunch together. After lunch, Jungkook and Yin entered their bedroom. Without saying much, Jungkook approached her, expressing the longing he had held back during his business trip. With a gentle yet intentional gesture, he hugged Yin tightly and kissed her passionately. The kiss was deep and intense, laden with the longing they had both harbored for days apart. Yin, I've missed you, Jungkook whispered after breaking the kiss, his breath warm in Yin's ear. I want you right now. Yin, carried away by the same feelings and atmosphere, responded with her sweet smile. I've missed you too, Jungkook. I'm glad you're back, she said, returning his kiss with equal intensity. They embraced and kissed again, releasing a week's worth of longing without any touch. That afternoon, their bedroom felt more alive, the sounds of their intimate activities audible. The next day, Yin was seen sitting alone, deep in thought, in the gazebo of their home's garden, after seeing her husband off to work after they finished breakfast. She hadn't slept all night, following their lovemaking activities the previous afternoon when she noticed a new tattoo on Jungkook's chest. It was a small tattoo, but she could see it clearly. It was a name, a woman's name, Hikari. She wanted to ask Jungkook about it afterward, but he had fallen asleep exhausted from their activities. The previous afternoon, Jungkook was unusually intense and somewhat, perhaps just Yin's feeling, or is it because he missed me so much? Or was he actually imagining another woman at the time? Yin's heart suddenly felt like it was being pinched, tears threatening to spill. She immediately took out her phone from her pocket, trying to open her social media, and typed that name, Hikari. Soon, several accounts with the same name appeared, seemingly a popular name as many women had it. However, one thing was certain, it was a Japanese woman's name as all those accounts showed Japanese women's profile photos. Her heart grew more anxious knowing the fact that it was a Japanese woman, wondering if this related to her husband's past since Jungkook had lived in Japan. She then checked each Hikari account to see if any were friends with Jungkook. Strangely, none were friends with her husband's social media account. Of course, Jungkook wouldn't be friends with the woman named Hikari to avoid suspicion. She was truly hurt by this revelation, realizing her husband still loved another woman even after they were married. You're cruel Jungkook, just when I was beginning to love you, but you've broken my heart like this. Yin's tears flowed freely, unable to accept this. Finally, with rough movements, she wiped her tears and went straight to their bedroom and began packing some of her clothes into a suitcase. She wanted to go to her parents' house right away, feeling the need to cool off. Yin had been at her parents' house for an hour, still crying and not yet ready to tell her mother what was troubling her. Naturally, her mother was very worried to see her daughter crying continuously. Did your husband do something terrible to you, sweetheart? Her mother asked repeatedly, truly concerned. Yin didn't answer, continuing to cry. Please give me some time, mom. I will tell you everything later, but not right now. Finally, her mother understood. All right, calm your mind first. Then I will step out. Call me whenever you are ready to talk. After saying this reluctantly, her mother left Yin's bedroom. A few minutes later, Yin heard her phone ring seeing her husband's name on the display. What now? She could guess that one of the guards who accompanied her here had told her husband that she had returned to her parents' house. Yin snorted in annoyance and chose not to answer the call. Soon after, her phone buzzed again, this time a message from her husband. I was told by the guard that you went back to your parents' house. What's going on Yin? Why so suddenly and why didn't you tell me? Yin frowned, reading that, don't pretend to care about me. I know you still love another woman. Yin muttered to herself, not replying to her husband's message. But yet another message came in from her husband. Yin, why are you only reading my messages but not replying? Are you busy? Yin again snorted to herself after reading her husband's message. A few seconds later, another message from her husband came in. Yin, please answer me, don't make me worry. Yin, are you okay? The guard who accompanied you to your parents' house has told me that you've arrived safely, what are you doing? Why aren't you picking up my calls and replying to my messages? Baby, please reply to my message. Don't make me worry. Yin rolled her eyes in irritation when she read the last message from her husband, baby. He calls me baby when another woman's name is engraved on his chest. How infuriating. Yin's tears continued to flow more fiercely as she read the incoming messages from her husband. Wanting to be undisturbed, she finally typed something on her screen. I'm fine at my parents' house. Please do not disturb me for now. I am tired and want to rest. After typing this, Yin immediately pressed the send button. Not long after, another reply came from Jungkook. All right then, enjoy your time with your parents. That was the last message from him. After reading that, Yin cried again. You're cruel, Jungkook. 
You still love your past love even after having me. This time, Yin's cries were loud, her mother, deeply concerned by the sound, quickly entered her bedroom and embraced her daughter tightly. Yin, what's really going on? Tell me. Don't keep me worried like this. Finally, through sobs, Yin began to confide in her mother, Jungkook. He still loves another woman, mom. Her mother was taken aback, feeling the pain in Yin's heart now infecting her own. Are you sure, Yin? Have you found out for certain? Is what you're saying true? I've looked into it, mom. He seems to have been in love with a Japanese woman when he was studying in Japan, and he still loves her, even has a tattoo of her name on his chest. What? There's a woman's name tattooed on his chest? What is this woman's name? Her mother was now genuinely shocked, feeling wounded by the revelation. The name on Jungkook's chest is, Hikari Yin replied, her tears flowing even more heavily. Hearing the name, her mother suddenly gasped, Hikari? He has Hikari tattooed on his chest? Since when has this name been there? Was it before you two were married? Yin shook her head, Jungkook already had several tattoos on his chest, but this name, this tattoo of the woman's name, was added recently. It wasn't there when we got married a month ago. Suddenly, her mother burst into laughter, looking at Yin and nearly crying herself from the mixture of emotions. Hikari is you Yin, her mother finally said. Yin, who was crying, fell silent at her mother's sudden laughter upon hearing the name Hikari. She became even more confused by what her mother said. What do you mean, mom? Don't leave me confused all alone like this. Her mother tried to calm herself, then took both of Yin's hands and looked into her eyes deeply. Listen to my story. Your father and I honeymooned in Japan, and while we were there, we met a little girl about eight years old. She was running around us as if trying to get our attention. She was a beautiful little girl. Shortly afterward, an old woman came over. It turned out she was the grandmother of the girl. Your father spoke with her. I don't understand Japanese and just listen to your father speaking with her. After the grandmother left with her granddaughter, your father told me her name was Hikari, an orphan whose parents had died together and since then she liked to draw attention from young couples like us back because it reminded her of her parents. I was touched by your father's story about Hikari, and for some reason, I like that girl's name, Hikari, your father said it means light or shine in Japanese. I thought Hikari was a beautiful name and its meaning was beautiful too, I liked it. When you were born, I wanted to give you that name, but our parents were against it because it wasn't a Korean name, we had to use a Korean name for you. Yes, that's why we didn't end up naming you Hikari, even though I really liked that name. And that time, when you were sick, Jungkook called me to come to your house. When I arrived, you were still asleep, and I sat with Jungkook in the living room for an hour. He asked a lot about you and I told him many stories about you, including funny stories about your childhood. For some reason then, I wanted to tell him about the name Hikari that I wanted to name you but ended up not being your name. Hikari? That's a nice name, mom. It means light or shine, Jungkook remarked, engaging with his mother-in-law's story. Wow. You know its meaning, Jungkook. His mother-in-law appeared impressed with him. I studied in Japan, so I speak Japanese fairly well and that's why I know its meaning. That's great. My husband can also speak Japanese, though not fluently. He has many Japanese business contacts so he had to learn the language, though certainly not as well as you. Jungkook smiled, sighed, and then said, Hikari. It sounds quite sweet. I like the meaning of that name. It fits Yin perfectly. She is radiant and bright. Hearing Jungkook says that, Yin's mother chuckled, yes, it's a pity I couldn't name her that. Suddenly Yin was silent after hearing her mother's story. So, Hikari, is me? Her mother nodded firmly, yes, I'm sure it is you. Especially since you said the tattoo with the name Hikari just appeared on Jungkook's chest, it's clearly another name for you Yin. Knowing this fact once again left Yin confused, upset, angry at Jungkook and at herself, and also feeling foolish, clearly. Her emotions were now a jumble. Just calm down now. I'm sure Jungkook actually wanted to explain to you, but before he could do so, you had already seen the tattoo. Now, try to take a nap, okay? Her mother said with a sweet smile to Yin before finally leaving her bedroom. Yin, who was now sitting on the bed, immediately flung herself down on the mattress. Ah, my brain is so tired from thinking about this crazy misunderstanding, she muttered to herself. Feeling her heart start to ease, she unknowingly fell asleep. Two hours later, Yin was deeply asleep when suddenly she wanted to change her body position, turning to her left, and her hand began to search for a pillow to hug, but her eyes suddenly shot wide open because instead of finding a pillow, she felt a human figure lying next to her. Jungkook, when did you get here? Why are you suddenly here? Jungkook remained silent, just looking at his wife's face. Soon after, one of his hands gently touched her cheek, caressing it, and a faint smile appeared on Jungkook's lips. 
I initially came home from the office to rest. My body is very tired, but I couldn't rest thinking about you. I'm sure something was troubling your mind which is why you went back to your parents' house without talking to me first. Hearing what her husband said, Yin involuntarily swallowed. Then, shortly after that, she saw Jungkook smiling, no, more precisely, it seemed like he was trying to hold back his laughter. Just now, when downstairs, your mother told me that earlier you. Before Jungkook could continue, Yin quickly covered his mouth to stop him from speaking. Don't continue, it's your own fault for not talking to me. Gently, Jungkook then grasped her hand that was trying to cover his mouth. Baby, listen to me. The tattoo on my chest is you. You are my Hikari, meaning you are the light in my heart. You illuminate my life, bring color to my stiff life, my life brighter by marrying you. Yin blushed, hearing what her husband expressed. Yet, there was another curiosity that was not yet satisfied. Finally, she asked, wanting to clear all the doubts in her heart. And that night, you said you were attracted to or perhaps fell in love with a woman, but you didn't try to approach her. Who was that woman? Maybe it's indeed your past, but I'm curious who she was. Jungkook smiled faintly, moved closer, and gave Yin a brief kiss on the lips. No. Who said that woman is from my past? That woman is still in my heart even now. Hearing that, Yin's eyes narrowed in annoyance. So it's true? You actually still love another woman? There was a girl who once caught my attention. In fact, I loved her but I never approached her because I wasn't yet thinking about those kinds of things. Whenever I met that girl, I always stole glances at her. But she seemed uncomfortable with me. Every time our eyes met, she would quickly look away. However, I'm happy that eventually, luck was on my side. Through our parents we were finally matched, and now I have her forever. Her name is Park Yin who has now become Jian Yin. Yin blushed again, this time her face probably as red as a tomato. Yin, forgive me for taking so long to express my feelings, but I want you to know that I love you. Jungkook said softly, his hand never stopped caressing his wife's smooth cheek, occasionally stroking her hair. Yin shook her head gently, um, it hasn't been that long, we've only been married for a month, and it seems, I'm also beginning to love you. Jungkook smiled faintly, hearing his wife's words. Then he moved his face closer to hers, gently kissing her lips. Ah, uh, baby, I've been very busy these past few days, my body feels really tired, Jungkook stated while adjusting his lying position. Um, poor my husband is always busy working, do you want me to massage you so your body's tiredness will disappear? Yin asked while stroking her husband's head. Jungkook's eyes lit up and he nodded enthusiastically, of course I want, as long as it's not too much trouble for you. Yin smiled softly, of course, it's no trouble at all, I know you've always been busy working, from now on please don't be too busy, I don't want you to fall ill. Forgive me baby, from now on I'll control my schedule, I'll come home earlier, and I will also spend more time with you. Jungkook spoke gently but there was a tone of regret in his voice. Yin stroked Jungkook's head once more, alright, come on. Take off your clothes now, I'll massage your body. Jungkook then smirked mischievously. Can I also ask for a massage here? He asked while indicating his lower body. Yin glanced briefly in the direction Jungkook indicated, her face now truly blushing. Of course, I can massage that if you want, I can even do more than that. Jungkook smirked mischievously. I can't wait to feel your hands baby. Yin couldn't hold back her laughter anymore. Come on, quickly take off your clothes, you said you're tired, you said you want a massage before I change my mind. Jungkook chuckled and immediately began undressing. Okay okay, 